And good morning, everyone. Welcome into a brand new edition of Sports Medicine Weekly on this Saturday morning. Happy July to everybody as we continue through summer. It's hot, it's humid, but I love it. I'm Steve Cashel, joined by my usual co-host, Dr. Brian Cole, head team physician for the Chicago Bulls, one of the team physicians for the Chicago White Sox and the Chicago Dogs baseball team, also a orthopedic surgeon from Midwest Orthopedics at Rush. Our website is Sports medicineweekly.com. Dr. Cole, how are you on this Saturday? Steve, I'm trying to stay cool and uh, doing great. Great to talk to you and see you this morning. Good. Give me a quick update of, uh, you know, things that are happening here. It's good to see that we're talking about sports coming back, and uh, I know one baseball team's already playing, right? Yes. You know, so, uh, you know, the uh, American uh, Indi- Association Independent Baseball, uh, there are six teams that are playing games on a regular basis. Uh, they have fans, uh, 14 to 1,500 fans in, in Chicago for the Chicago Dogs. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, uh, the NBA is still as planned, and all the things seem to be moving in the right direction. You've heard the commissioner speak, maybe. Uh, the things seem to be actually going extremely well. Uh, uh, the NHL has plans now for two cities, and they're starting to mobilize. Uh, NFL is uh, planning on, uh, I think they're talking about eliminating the first part of the season, sort of the games that don't count, and then starting a little bit later. But again, have plans for proceeding. So, you know, I, I guess everything's going in the, in the right direction, despite the fact that uh, COVID has not obviously gone away, and we still have uh, significant uh, spikes in our in the, in the first wave. Uh, we here in Illinois have to still continue to be very, very careful. All the same rules apply. But I would say, thankfully, uh, things seem to be going overall very well. And I think it's hopefully very helpful for people to see some semblance of normalcy in sports. So I'll remain cautiously optimistic. Okay, let's move on. And Dr. Cole, uh, interesting that the uh, NBA preparing to play again. And we'll see about the Bulls uh, still on hold of course, may not be playing uh, regular games again till December, but it brings up an interesting point when we talk about uh, sports medicine and uh, a number of players, uh, Bulls and NBA players, Windy City Bulls players, G League players, um, some coming off injuries. And I guess it's been to their advantage now that the NBA has shut down due to COVID. And uh, it seems like uh, a, a good time for these guys, if I was in that situation, it would be a great time that we had to shut it down because we aren't missing anything, correct? Yes, Steve. You know, one of the biggest challenges we have is the time it takes to get an athlete back to play if they require any form of treatment and the subsequent recovery. So um, that time pressure, depending on when the treatment was provided during or shortly after the season, uh, gets decompressed a little bit. So it, it's, you know, we, we will see it in Orlando, a number of athletes coming off injury and treatment and um, they otherwise had the season continued, uh, would not have participated, but you're going to see people playing uh, that would have otherwise been boxed out because they're trying to recover from their injuries. We've got a great example right here and a gentleman on the line who um, is a member of the Chicago Bulls and the Windy City Bulls, currently on a two-way contract. Uh, Max Struess, he grew up in the Chicago area, attended Stag High School in Palos Hills, played college basketball at DePaul University. Now back last December, uh, the Bulls announced that Max suffered a torn ACL and a bone bruise on his left knee in an NBA G League game for the Windy City Bulls. And Dr. Cole, I understand you performed the surgery, and uh, it's great to have Max on the line. So I want to kind of go through uh, what Max has gone through with his torn ACL and the recovery process. So Max, tell us a little bit, you know, um, good news is you're doing great, and you're probably uh, well ahead of schedule. A lot of it is to your diligence. Uh, But, you know, how, how, how tough was it? And, you know, maybe... If you don't mind, just relive what happened. Actually, your the mechanism of injury, how it how it actually went down. Yeah, so I was um, out at the G League showcase in Vegas um, in December, late December, and uh, I was going and driving to the basket, and I went to do a Euro step, and my plant leg um, hyperextended, and my knee kind of went backwards, um, and I knew something was wrong right away, and. Um, you know, ended up being a torn ACL. Came back to Chicago and um, got with Dr. Cole. Had surgery on January 10th, and then have been rehabbing ever since. Um, it's it's been a long journey, but uh, honestly, hasn't been too bad. And, and COVID's helped me out with a lot of it. And 
feel felt like I'm not missing anything. So that's that's been the main root of everything and helped me keep a positive mindset along it and, and help me where I am today. Did you know right away that it happened? No, no, I did not. I knew something was wrong because um, it was just an awkward landing. Um, but like I said, I thought I just hyperextended it or maybe did something, pulled my hamstring or something like that. But I didn't think it was that serious. And um, the doctors that looked at me at the at the gym right away um, didn't think it was that bad either. But I think I was bracing myself for the test that you do for an ACL. So that kind of gave them a a bad view, but um, no, I didn't. I didn't think it was that bad right away. Uh, it was unfortunate when I got the news back in Chicago. Visiting with Max Struess, currently with the Chicago Bulls and Windy City Bulls. Steve Cashel with Dr. Brian Cole at Sports Medicine Weekly. Max had a torn ACL last December. Dr. Cole doing the surgery for him. Dr. Cole, let me ask you: In a situation like this, um, do most people who suffer torn ACLs is it obvious to them, or like Max said, sometimes you, you think it's a hamstring or something? Um, I would say that most feel they had a significant event. Um, there's often, you know, for better or worse, some denial that goes on, and there's that hope that, you know, how could it be that bad? Uh, because a lot of times these happen, there's no physical contact. Like he says, you come down, you move a certain way, and the knee gives out, and you're like, how could that cause injury? That's the sort of randomness of the ACL tearing. Um, so I would, but, you know, when you really, I can tell you this much, the story is about as reproducible as you can ever have for any orthopedic injury. You know, if Ma, if, Ma, if I talked to Max on the phone when it happened, I would say, I, I, I hate to tell you this, but pretty sure you probably tore your ACL because you, you feel the knee give way. It's always on a, a redirection or a misstep. That's like 85% of the time that, that that mechanism happens. And then they swell and they have, you know, the inability often to go back to play right away. Uh, but it's it's not sometimes it's not that remarkable and guys are like yeah I think I just sprained my knee uh, but the story is almost always the same and it's it's really uh, reproducible. And Max, can you take us through the recovery process? You know, for those of us who've never had a torn ACL, um, obviously following surgery, you know, you, I'm sure you got to stay off it. But then, uh, what do you do next, and and how long does it take? Yeah, so um, you uh, get out of surgery, and, and luckily mine was just ACL, and I didn't have a meniscus or um, anything else wrong with my knee. So luckily, it just being an ACL, I was able to be weight-bearing as soon as possible. Um, I was in a locked-out leg brace um, to get full extension, and then I was on crutches for about two days, and then after that I was able to put some weight on and walk um, with the brace. Um, and then I was out of the brace in like – a week or two weeks, which was very surprising to me. Um, I thought I was going to be in that thing for like a month or two, but um, I guess when you only tear your ACL, it's, they want you out of it and, and moving as, as quickly as possible, and I guess that um, helps you out in the long run. So um, I was out of that in, like I said, about two weeks, and then they, then you go right to rehab, and um, you start moving it right away. Um, nothing crazy, just um, you know, flexing your quad and trying to get those muscles back firing and um, it's it, it's a long process, but um, it wasn't too bad. And uh, you, I mean, just the idea of you walking out of surgery is it was mind blowing to me, and um, it was an experience that I'll never forget. But I honestly haven't had too much uh, struggle with it, luckily. Max, what do you think? Like when you went into this, and I and you and I never really had the chance to have these conversations, but like, what were you most afraid of if you will and maybe you're afraid of nothing but i'm curious you know you're i mean everyone has some apprehension and concern with these things like what did you find throughout the process early on that was most concerning to you yeah um i think the thing that's most concerning to me is the is the future um of like after this and, and when i get back to playing it's just the risk of doing it again and and the risk of making that same move and having that thought in the back of your mind that this is how you did it. You might do it again if you do this. So I think that's going to be the biggest, um, you know, hope to jump through for me is just to get over that mindset of um, having that idea in my head that this is how I do it. And um, just getting past that, I think is going to be the strongest, strongest thing for me to get through. Currently on a two-way contract with the Chicago Bulls and Windy City Bulls. Max grew up in the Chicago area, Stag High School, played college ball at DePaul University, suffered a torn ACL back last December. Dr. Cole, my co-host, performed the surgery in January. Dr. Cole, um, I want to ask you, 
Hey, I remember you telling me this about other NBA players or other athletes that you've performed the ACL surgery. Um, am I mistaken to remember that uh, you say, boy, when you fix that thing, it is, is as strong as could be, and actually the other knee is more susceptible to injury rather than the one that was uh, repaired? Yeah, no, it's, you know, Max made a great point about his early post-op recovery. The first part is the early phases of recovery. I think it's really important to get people moving quickly and get them, it's safe enough to get out of the brace early and get them full weight bearing as long as there's no other meniscus problems that we're fixing. And I can tell you that that's the first phase of just getting an athlete comfortable with it and getting the rehab started early. The rehab is I think the most, you got to do a good operation, but I, I think the, the important part is what the athlete puts into it and starting very, very early along that process. Um, when guys get back, if you look statistics, um, there's about a 7 8% retear rate in the NBA included when you look at ACLs that are being done. And the, the interesting thing about the ACL is that there's probably four to six movement patterns that put a person at risk after an ACL reconstruction. And if you manage those post-operatively and you know what these are things Steve that we actually work on the trainers who are really well versed in this work on this during you know for part of the strength and conditioning but it's there's always a heightened sense of uh, you know uh, uh, awareness of this when you're dealing with it post-operatively but there are modifiable risk factors that you know that Max is involved with now that in theory and I'm not even in theory factually correct that statistically he has a higher likelihood of injuring the other side God forbid than the one he tore. Now the good news is there's not too many people in the NBA have torn both sides. That's actually surprisingly rare. But all across the board, you know, um, in re-injury rates are, you know, in the seven eight percent range. You know, we probably do about 200 ACLs a year, and that's a fair amount to be honest. And we probably see one to two retears a year. And um, I think a lot of it is now because we understand the rehab so well. And I think starting quickly with the rehab is really important. And, you know, Max alluded to, and I was going to, you know, right before your last comment, I, so he alluded to this fear of getting back and it happening again. Um, Max, if I asked you now, you know, what's the highest level activity you're participating in now and how do you feel? Do you still have that sense of apprehension or, uh, or, or do you feel like, hey, this is, I can really trust this and, and it feels good? Yeah, um, I mean, I'm back on the court jumping and, and doing everything pretty much. Um, just no contact or anything like that. So um, with the things I'm doing, I feel great and that I'm on my way back to being normal and how I was before it happened. Um, my athleticism starting to come back and um, everything's starting to feel normal again to me and I start, and I'm, I feel like an athlete again. So um, my mindset and then the mental side of it is getting stronger every day, just knowing that I can do these things and, and putting myself through it. Um, so I'm, I'm growing out of that fear, but it's always going to be in the back of my mind, but I'm doing it and, and, you know, the constant reps of doing it are going to help me. Um, and, and, and I can already do it right now. So me being only six months out of surgery and, and being able to do the thing that made me get the surgery in the first place has, has helped me a lot. And Dr. Cole, I wanted to ask you an additional question. With Max listed as uh, six foot five, 215 pounds, how does height and weight affect therapy and recovery from a torn ACL? I'm not sure I can answer that. I, I will tell you that um, I, the one thing I can tell you is that when I look at the positions who get it, the, depending on the position they play, the rapidity with which we can get people back does differ. So for example, a center, big forward they are often in my experience easier to get back than a guard okay and I think it's in part uh, what's required of their positions and agility issues and so forth they're really two different kinds of athletes when you think about it it's not just because of their height but they just they function and move differently so um, I can only say that you know and it's somewhat anecdotal and I, I you know we've published a couple of papers in NBA uh, and I, I actually I, the problem is, if we were to do a, a, a review of how quickly athletes get back and how they how well they stay, um, it, it would be tough because it's all retrospective. It's looking backwards, and return to sports are the number that are published in, on papers is really nefarious. I mean, it's not you can't rely on them because there's so many different reasons when a guy returns back, and it's the least of which is the how well they've recovered from their injury. It could be roster changes, time of the season 
you know, coach's decision, all those things lead into when a patient, when an athlete really gets back to play. But the one thing I can safely tell you, at least anecdotally, Steve, is that the, the big guys uh, tend to get back, and maybe it's counterintuitive, but I think it's because of how they play and how they move. Big guys get back faster and they stay back, and the guards and the really, the smaller, really agile, very quick, um, you know, sort of the, I don't know, the, 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 the like the, 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 the whippets, the dogs, the really sort of hyperactive, you know, all over the place, maybe less body control, more haphazard. Those are the guys who have a harder time getting all their athleticism back early, and they also potentially potentially have a higher re-injury interesting stuff max my final question is um you know about the therapy what was it pool therapy was it um the, the lifting box jumps take me through some of the uh some of the different uh you know applications you yeah. went through to develop that knee again yeah so it started out with just you know basically getting to walk again um, normally um, so that was just building up my quad and um, all the muscles in the leg to, to fire out to do that um, and then it's like calf raises um, a lot of squats and then the big thing I've done is RDL um, a lot of the RDLs and then once you're in, your leg gets that strength and you can run um, once you're running you could start the jumping and it's just a long process of things that you just build up to get to so once you get to running, that's kind of when you know your your leg is strong and, and the muscles are good. And then you can keep building up from there. And then you start in the jumping. And then after jumping, you turn into multiple, multiple, uh, multiple direction turns and um, things like that. So uh, it was a long process. And obviously still advancing in those stages, but um, just taking, taking one step at a time. Funny story. the day So two days after surgery, you have to go into your post-op and um, – Dr. Cole, I had to go meet with Dr. Cole after the surgery, and they did a little x-ray just to see how the screws were and everything was looking. And uh, Dr. Cole walked in the room, looked at the screws, and then looked at me and goes, damn, I did a really good job. <laughs> so that, kind of, that, kind of, that kind of put me at ease, and it, was, and it made me made me think that I'm, I'm in good hands here. So, <laughs> uh, Max, I'll tell you, so whenever anyone says something and they repeat it back that I said, it always sounds so much worse. <laughs> and it's much more embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it helped me well, out. Made me made me think everything. All right, I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah. <laughs> well, and Max, uh, Dr. Cole operated on my right shoulder, um, throwing too many baseballs all my life and shooting basketballs. Yeah. So uh, he also said he did a great job. So we got that going for us. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have a hey, little Max, humility thanks. in life, right? You know, yeah. Max, I love I love how you shoot the three. It was great watching you at DePaul University. Uh, I graduated from DePaul, so I've always been a huge fan of the Blue Demons. So um, I remember you in high school, but continued success uh, with both the Chicago Bulls and Windy City Bulls. So happy you're you're part of the family. And um, thanks so much for joining us here on Sports Medicine Weekly. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. You got Thank it. You, Max. That's Max Struess. Currently with the Bulls and the Windy City Bulls. Grew up here in the Chicago area. Stag High School. We're going to take a break here on Sports Medicine Weekly. When Dr. Cole and I return, we're going to do our staple of the show. It's our Ask the Doctor segment. Tell you how you can get involved. Stay with us. You're listening to Sports Medicine Weekly only on 